so what I told you was true from a certain point of view. And welcome to Tales from the Dark Side. We have another uh, episode that's great. Unfortunately, uh, Leaky Trooper had leaked so badly into his uh, outfit that he has to go change. And for some reason, it's really hard to change in and out of uh, Stormtrooper costume. So whatever was going on there, we don't want to know. Uh, if you want a video of that, maybe put it down there, but we're not promising anything. Hey, Solo Wookie, tell you're here today. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. And as usual, uh, we got our uh, uh, – we always have to have three. So we picked up from uh, the Mando show and from uh, Comic Book Women. Jen, Jen, say hi. Hey, how you guys doing? So Jen wanted to talk about her favorite Smurfette. Is that right, Jen? <laughs> I just said that Yaddle reminds me of Smurfette. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about her past and, believe it or not, her future. There might actually be a future for uh, Yaddle. So make sure you stay around because at the end we'll kind of go through, uh, you know, obviously the canon stuff. We're going to start off with the non-canon stuff. We'll go to the canon stuff and kind of throw in a couple things that might be interesting about uh, the old uh, Smurfette. Yeah, though. Um, for the people that don't know who we're talking about, we are talking about this. Uh, it, it She's a, a beautiful... Uh, what is she? She's half the age of Yoda, right? Like, everybody thinks the female Yoda. Yeah. She, like, Yoda was, like, what, 800 when he died? She was, like, 474 in Legacy when she passed away, so 474 years old. Uh, she obviously, when Lucas had her in mind, they really just did like, you know how Zeb was like the sketch of um, Chewbacca, like the first sketch of that? Mm -hmm. Same thing with her. She was taking off the first sketch of Yoda. That's why everybody calls her the female Yoda. Um, one of the first books she's in, uh, and you can call it what you want. I know Jen was disappointed when I called it her first because then she read the book and was like, what oh. do you think, Jen? Well, it's only two panels. I was yeah. like, that's it? Yeah. Oh. So it's this. It's uh, Star Wars. Is it 14? I can't remember. I just know. 13. 13. 13. Yeah. And this is a great one anyways, because this is where you get the, you've seen us talk about before. This is where you, the cover right there is the dark uh, woman and um, Asha, Asherad Het, the guy who becomes Crate. They're doing their little training. And that's actually a portion where you see her. They go around like pretty much the whole Jedi panel and they name her. They say something in here. I cut the, the talk, the wordy wordies out of it, but pick up that book if you haven't already. Not only that, like 13, 14, I think 15, 16 tells you that whole storyline. As mm -hmm. I always say, it's great to pick it up. But it's also great because she's in it a lot. Uh, so are a lot of the other Jedi from the Jedi Council. She does have a cover appearance in that run too on yes. 16. That's why I always get it wrong because it's 16. Yeah, look at how great she looks there. Flowing hair, young lady, <laughs> looking good. Looking <laughs> Way down a Shrek. <laughs> looking good inside she's uh she, she's pretty much a cabbie at one point that's what they have her doing is driving people around but she does get uh a lot of play in that storyline and that's kind of like her first introduction into comics uh storyline wise where she is there is however a singular story uh because we always love going back to this series uh this title in dark horse this is one that holds a lot into our heart uh fat club uh, because it's got some great stories in it, but it's got a, a, you know, they always break it down to four or five stories and it's tales. This one is spectacular because it also has got one of my favorites, the photo, the star Wars photo cover. Hey, you know, mm -hmm. if you guys haven't been drinking Colt 45, by the way, you should try it. It's real smooth. Uh, <laughs> the Lando issue, the first story in this star Wars tales, um, happens to be called Yettles tales. Um, it's interesting. It goes kind of for her origin story. So it kind of talks back how she was when she was a Padawan, goes through a little bit of that. There is a very interesting, I would say, scene in it. Uh, <clears throat> she's kind of telling people what to do and not to do, I guess. And this guy ends up stabbing, kind of tripping and stabbing herself. And that was like her, <laughs> her big move. She is, let's pull it back up. She's illustrated very well in there too. Like, uh, Ugh, the illust I should have probably got more pictures. Of it. Pick the book up. It shouldn't be that expensive. I, you know, I usually get so you're saying up. she nagged him to death? <laughs> yeah, no. She kind of just jumped around, and I think he tripped on If I remember the book correctly, he tripped on a rock, and she's like, I told you not to. Like, whatever. Well, she's kind of she's kind of putting the, the force, the uh, wiggy wiggy on him. Because in the background, you can see the, the, the 
three finger force movement. I do, but no, I think that's because she's jumping on the staff. If I remember the book correctly, he like trips over a lot. Like she's like, you shouldn't run. It's almost like a run with scissors type thing. And, you know, remember Tails had all those kind of like jokey or yes. corny lines. It wasn't that, but it was something that hinted. I think at that. If I recall, probably somebody like JJ Maxwell is going to be in the comment section right now telling us how wrong we are with this. But if I recall correctly, she was kind of like warning him like you shouldn't play with knives or you shouldn't attack me or something to that effect. And he ends up tripping, falling and stabbing himself through the head and neck. And then she like tries to cradle him and help him back to health or something. And then then this happens. I told you. Don't run with scissors. Right, right. Or knives. And then this kind of happens, which is very interesting. And I know there's a red arrow here, and it, it's it, I'll 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 go back to this later. But this is where they kind of make her, um, you know, a Jedi uh, Council person or whatever at the end of that book. So that's it's interesting. That's, note about that picture: if you look at Mace Windu's lightsaber, it is not purple; it is uh, white. Uh, uh. That could just be you think that is white or you think it's just bad copying? I don't know. Uh whatever. You know, it's Tails, right? Like Tails wasn't even really canon when legacy stuff was canon, right? Like Tails is kind of just well, the last couple issues were so like the last was this 21 on, I think we're off the top of my head again. But um these first ones, like this is like five or something. I can't remember. We can go back and look at it, but five even, or six or something. even notice it's like yellow. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, Yaddle, I mean, Yaddle is at a five. With a five. <laughs> okay. No more corny Yaddle jokes. Uh, Lady. Uh, there it is. Um, <laughs> there was one more piece that was kind of interesting. And actually, I just wanted to bring this up because I like it. Um, you can still order it. Uh, it's still kind of expensive because I think they sell it for cover. Um it's this book right here. This is actually a book, so it's like a reedy reedy book. It, but it does have pictures in it. It's just not as many pictures as we're used to reading. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Star Wars: The Essential Reader's Guide. It's the Helago uh, one. Um, it pretty much is a summary. This is why I like this book. It's pretty much a summary of a lot of these stories uh, throughout the Dark Horse era, the novels in that era. What's that? Oh, right there. That's that book right there. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, you got it back there. Nice. Yeah, so it gives, like, all these summaries of all this type of – yeah. You, so do you want to talk about what's in that book? Um, No, go ahead. You're doing fine. I'll grab <laughs> it, though. Yeah, so it's got a bunch of summaries in it. kind of covers a lot of the uh, the tale, like, just characters and stuff like that, but really shortens down some of the storylines. It does show some covers. It will hit up everything from the comics to the other novels that came out uh, through Del Rey at the time. So it's a great book to have on hand. Uh in that book, however, it does show the death of Yaddle, um, <clears throat> which is this. <laughs> she grabs a – so she uh, she grabs like a hyper uh, bomb uh, and ends up saving somebody but blows herself up. So – Dark Horse is not continuity. No, it's not, not. Not not at all. Neither is this book. This was just – this was before – this book covered – What's good about it is it covers all the stuff that isn't canon or continuity. But as you know, they're bringing a lot of this stuff. They're changing around what happens, and they're bringing it into the new era. And that actually brings up a good point because now that pretty much concludes what we are going to cover on her non-canon, non-continuity stuff. And we're going to start getting into where she kind of shows up. And where she – besides – and I'm not talking about the movies because we all know she shows up in the movies. I'm talking about the comic books. But back when she starts getting into the stories of the comic books and she does show back up or she's mentioned in some novels, she does actually show up in, I think, Dark Disciple, Master and Apprentice. She shows up in Master and Apprentice and she tells uh, Qui-Gon Jinn when he's about to be Dooku's protege something to the effect of like, stop practicing. You're going to wear yourself out and you're going to fail your test, so go to bed. That's just useless knowledge, but – that's a good book. You should read it. Um, she does show up kind of in this book, Vader 25. Uh, this is the soul stuff. Uh, I sometimes say Aaron, but I know it's soul. We did a special series? on this. What's that? The first series, Darth Vader yeah, The first series. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is the variant. And it has one of my, you know, if you watch some of our other videos, you know I collect the uh, uh, Galaxy Icons. It has a Galaxy Icon cover. So those are the three covers for this book. In it, if you recall, if you watch the soul, the soul stuff, uh, the Charles Soul stuff, we talk about this, like when Vader goes into this magical world. And remember, like when you see Vader with all the swirls and he's red, that's like him having these dark visions. In the dark vision, he kills Yaddle, 
but that's not it's not a hundred percent because he kills other people too that he didn't kill. Yeah. So it kind of puts it up in the air. And Jenna just told us that she had finished off one of her favorite video games. Jen, what game's that? Fallen Order. Fallen Order. And in Fallen Order, there's a little scene. And I think it was this scene. I'm not 100% sure. And those characters right there are what? Uh, Grez and how do you Sarah? C-E-R-E. I can't remember how they say her name. Uh, Grez is the uh, the furrier of the two characters. Very sarcastic in this game, would you say? Yeah. And he's like and the pilot. He's the pilot. And then she's the... Uh, well, I like her backstory. That's pretty cool that she was a Jedi, but she doesn't practice currently. Well, mm -hmm. at the end she does, but... And maybe we'll cover that too in an uh, episode of like what people were former Jedis and not Order 66 and and are still around in the realm. Or maybe we'll just do this whole story because there's a lot of stuff that comes out of this video game, which is kind of cool. But the point I wanted to talk about was when they were talking, he references like a... He's like, well, maybe uh, there are still Jedis around and maybe one of them will... Uh, will reform the order. And she's like, and he's like, yeah, you know, like back on my planet, they were always talking about this Jedi that's still out there. That's got like green air, green ears that are pointy in here. And she's like, are you talking about master Yoda? And he's like, nah, bro, I'm talking about Yeddle. And like, now does that mean that she's still around? No, but in the current Canon, she didn't, she didn't take this. She didn't jump and sacrifice her herself to a bomb. Instead in the current Canon, she actually was like during Clone Wars, right before uh, the portion of Order sixty six, right before Anakin comes in and like starts turning to the dark. She goes like, "Peace, I, I'm out, dude. I'm I'm done." And technically, put her apprentice in her place. Or no, was it who was it? Uh, Shakti, that, Shakti takes her place. Shakti took her place. Yeah. So when you see Shakti in the movies and everything like that, that's she's gone and she's kind of. I would say she like alienated herself, but she kind of went on like a mission where she took some time to try to like, like a monk or something. What would that I be? Think, I think you're right. That her apprentice stays on the council. He Okay. So that's a good, yeah. Bringing that's okay. So that was a good point. Let's bring up that picture again. That I want to show now, obviously this was, uh, this was in this, this red arrow right here. It turns out that that they met messed up in tails. And that, that is the, uh, even in that it was, it was wrong. But that is this character right here, which is, I know it looks like a bird, but I'll show you a better picture. It's technically like a bird. <laughs> bird snake, bird, whatever. It's O-P-P-O, so Opo, Opo, whatever. It's it's a male. This is a male uh, species. Uh, oh, this not a species, is it? But this, of the species, this is the male character. <laughs> um, definitely showed up in the movies. Um uh, has showed up in the books. It actually had shown up in the Dark Horse stuff. Once again, you know, it had showed up in, in this. It, it was also one of the ones that showed up in this book. Um, ah, there, right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So there, Opa, whatever, uh, right next to Evan, who was tortured to death. Um, but how does he get a regular name, by the way? And, like, name that Opa. Whatever, dude. Uh, anyways, they just want me to screw up names. So showed up in there. That's actually the apprentice of Yeddle. Funny point about that too is uh, does show up in canon. Kind of. This is this is you ready for this one? Ready for him to fight over what this is called? Go ahead and chat. Have fun. What's that? Is that uh the back so that, of the head appearance? Yeah, so you see uh Shati where where Yeddle used to be, and then you see the head appearance of whatever that is. I will that, never get over that picture of Shock T right there. That is just terrible. Yeah. I, I don't know how that got passed through. Like the Denver. So bad. How did you create this and put it into a movie? Like, what is that? <laughs> like, that's supposed to be this? Like, that and this are not. Listen. Okay, anyways. So, back to that. So, that's in one. But now comes to the fun part. Comes to the fun part. Uh, this character, uh, where is well, I just pulled it off. This character is a lot is technically in canon to the best of our knowledge, uh, as of this day, still alive. As of uh, you know, what are they? What number seven? They're on uh, Darth Vader seven. Hmm. They're doing the new Star Wars series. They're doing that bounty hunter series. As of today, 
this character, this Slytherin, the uh, apprentice to uh, Yedel, we know for what would be considered facts, I guess, as close as facts could be, that he is still alive because he like slithered away, true story, slithered away. They're coming in to do Order 66 and he like slithered away and then like hid in the vents and then like got out and has fleed and he has not officially been killed. Um, and what we were kind of saying about Yedel 2 because there's a lot of theories going around about her currently, I would assume, uh, especially with like other shows, like let's be honest, like the Mandalorian show, we don't know what's going to happen between when we record this and like the month later when we usually put it out. But like, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, it could be a, a yet, a yet a Yoda baby, which we don't quite think is the thing. We're not saying it is, but there is a very strong possibility that if they do need somebody to train or somebody to somehow show up, that there could be a Yettel still right rolling around. Like she could be, I mean, she could be on a mountain someplace for all we know um, because she hasn't officially died. Now in, in that Vader book, he did uh dark vision slash dream killer, but does yeah. dreams count? I think he just like, I don't know. It, it, cause, cause you didn't see him do it. You saw like that weird, that, like maybe he just, it's like on his list, like his like hit list. Like I need to do this. Yeah, I mean that could po- that po- that's a that's a good possibility. Either way, the one person we do know who's still around is Snake Bird Dude. Like Snake Bird Dude is around, man, and he definitely. Uh, Wait, what's his name? Oppo. Oppo Oppo, which is funny because isn't that the name of the guy that is the resistant pilot who also is in Kim's convenience? Isn't isn't that what they call him Opa? Oh, that's, that's kind of good. I just thought about that. Like that's what they call him in the Kim's convenience. Is, like his dad name. Obo. Obo is his name, isn't it? Not Obo. It's O P P O. Opo. Opo. <laughs> now he now Opo differently. Opo, both of them too had like the one like got obliterated by that bomb uh Yedel did in Dark Horse. And Opo like just got murked like not well not 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 strong deaths for either one of those characters so it was interesting that they didn't like have him just just become order 66 right Mm. so i don't know i just thought it was interesting because people keep bringing those two characters up and like well if if, if they didn't bring it up in fallen order i think it would have been like a moot point but the fact they brought it up you're like because i know when i heard it i was like that's cool they didn't have to bring it that name up yeah why would you too like it wasn't like she was like a hugely popular character i mean yeah. even when even in dark horse stuff which they, dark horse would like just do a, a backstory for a character like they put characters huge stories on a lot of characters and they do, they'd over overkill almost on them and they kind of just were like glanced over i think there's three stories there's that emrys one there's the i mean like how much do you really need on her there's the emrys one there's the tales one which was her tales and then i think she was kind of in one more really um so probably a total of seven books, you know, I mean, like that's not a lot for a, for a character. I, in that, in that, in that storyline considering they put out so many books, but they are, I mean, that was it. I mean, we've had questions if she's still alive. Our question is eh, now that, now that the game probably 50 ish, 50 ish. Well, especially with the game, uh, Disney just put out uh Cal's lightsaber to be bought um, in uh their little Star Wars land. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, that's cool. And then Cal keeps coming up and it's like the actor who is the voice slash uh, likeness of it is within a good age range to bring him into like the Star Wars universe. They wouldn't have mentioned it for no reason. I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, they, they might not have, I don't know. Like sometimes it's tricky to play with some of the, just play with some of the toy lines is tricky. I think bringing all that stuff up, you have to remember they have been running for the last couple of years now, something called the gaming line mm. where they have like, that's where all the Revan stuff popped up. That's where some of the, um, what's their names? The uh, inquisitor stuff ran up. That's where star killer stuff. Like, I mean, look, is star killer really going to show up? You'd have to change him around a lot to get him into anything. You can't really do his story. But like they came out with that stuff. Did they come? I, I think they came out with him in a black series, yeah. and they came, yeah. So like, you know, they've been pushing that stuff out, but that's because it's part of the game, and that stuff sells. I mean, it's exclusive. 
most of it is exclusive. If I am incorrect, somebody can say this, but I think a lot of the gaming stuff is exclusive to GameSpot. GameStop? GameStop. The gaming GameStop. Stuff. But then even like that actor that did, uh, is it Galen Merrick from yeah. Force Unleashed? Uh, he's still heavily involved in Star Wars being Darth Maul's voice and like doing stuff with Star Wars still. So, I mean, he's not, I don't think, I think he's 41 now. Like You're it's like the genius of voice actors. Like the knowledge you have on voice actors is amazing. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Geez, I mean, at 41. God, how long is he? he got much time left. I think, his career I, think his, I think he's like 41 or 43. It's like in that, but he still looks like the character did in Horses Unleashed. So, but you're right. They would definitely need to rework that. Like, yeah, 41. God, down, down, down the backside of that hill. I wonder, hey, I wonder how old Solo Wookie is. Um, I'll, bet, I'll bet he's out there yelling at kids on his lawn. <laughs> hey, you do yell at your kids out on your lawn. <laughs> so what are you talking about? But yes, uh, no, I mean, that's it. Like they could, uh, look, I'd love to see these. This is the problem I get into yeah. a lot of times when I talk about stuff about how realistically it would be and like what you can actually do. Like they're doing a gaming line. So gaming lines are going to sell. They're selling them at GameSpot. So yeah. like, all of a sudden, everybody hears, oh, they're creating, they're putting out this toy. This character is definitely showing up in the new universe. Yeah, well, you can't, there's only so much you can put out in like in a year, right? Like, That's you're true. not going to run 20 different Star Wars shows. I mean, I'd love it, but like, but how, how brilliant really? would it be to tie them? Like, it'd be like when uh, Sony did that Miles Morales game, it's come, you know, they came out for PS5. Like, if you can, if you can do, like, so look, you, you always say it's, uh, Games, comics, toys. Like, yeah. you can hit all of them. Yeah, you could. and But I would have a few. So a lot of people don't know this, but, like, they've already done stuff where the Lego stuff, right? So, like, the Lego TV show stuff is not canon. So that's fine if they're doing a non-canon version. Of, like, if they did, like, an ultimate. I mean, that would be. Oh, now we're going to talk video games. How cool would it be if they did, like, the ultimate, like, team-up video games where you could just get, like, a team of Jedi and fight them against a team of this you know what i mean like that would be cool or like you'd go on certain questions you'd actually almost turn it into like the old final fantasy type thing mm -hmm. where you get, you get like five on a side and then you bought bass bottle pe boss battle people you know something like that effect like you could set up a squad and then if you <clears throat> then it then at a certain point you could mutate them and you could like do a whole lineup of jedi guys that turn dark or vice versa like yeah. how cool would that be right okay so we're in fantasy land again though like and how are although we well, yes. Although we would like that, you have to remember. You do have to remember that, like, they are tailoring towards us with certain things, but they are also tailoring towards the bigger uh, group. Like sure. when, when, when Mandalorian, when Mando took off his helmet, people were like, "Well, this is BS," because they don't ever take off their helmets. Because the only thing they know is Boba Fett and Mando. Yeah. No, I know. I, you can say it. There's people, look, there's people who put on channels talking about all types of Star Wars stuff that have never seen uh, Rebels or the Clone Wars cartoon. Like, and they talk about it a lot and they have t thousands of people that follow them. And there's thousands, I mean, there's hundreds of people that do it. Not everybody goes to Celebration and not everybody has like that, that cares that much or wants to get that deep down into it. So I think sometimes we're like so excited that we're like, oh, they came out with this action figure. Like, oh, cool. And then you think about it and you're like, all right, well, like, you know, Malachor 5 is now a planet. Like, and there's sis up there sniffing the ashes. Like, it's not this blown up. It's not even what it used to be. You know what I mean? So, like, you have to rewrite all that. Not just, like, you have to rewrite the story of how you convert. Or, like, yeah. oh, guess what? We know Darth Vader didn't have an apprentice like star killer like but we know that uh palpatine slash snoke had another apprentice besides kylo ren that was like said like once upon a time and so they could easily rework it so you could that, that would be yeah. star killer yeah I'm, I'm not saying that i'm not saying that that couldn't happen what i'm saying is but it's then hard. but what i'm saying is like if you're supposed to be getting away from the, the skywalker saga then where are you going to put that in in their current their current plans? It's tough. And what things is that going to come in phase three? Okay, cool. So you have ten years before you get there, right? Like that's what. Yeah. I mean, is that what we're looking at? Is that but what we're? We're going to do a video next about Fallen Order, Dark Temple, 
which yeah. game in the comics. So like, that's the hope I think people have it with Cal at least is that why would Marvel do a comic to tie things kind of sort of together? Right. So I think, but that's it. Yes. But once again, if you do Cal's story, then you have to put all these other stories on hold. Mm. You know, you can, there's only so much, there's only so much they're going to be willing to vest into these future stories ahead of time. Yeah. And like, get away from characters that they're selling right now. Right. You know what I mean? Like they've dipped their toes in trying to move away from the Skywalker saga before. And it hasn't always worked as well as it's currently working right now is all I'm going to say about that. Cause then we're going to get people yelling about whose fault it is that JJ Abrams is directing movies, which you can't be doing. Um, <laughs> But actually, you know what? I, so I don't watch a lot of YouTube, but I did. I did watch. Uh, I did watch. Uh, well, I like Kevin Smith, so I, you were like, "Hey, they have a good show on." So I watched that, and they did make a reference. Or no, you know what it was? It was your guys' show. You guys asked a question to um, what's that gentleman's name that does the that you guys interviewed uh, was last week? Oh, uh, oh shoot, uh, Frank Ogle. Frank Ogle, and you guys asked him if he was a fan of. Um, Star Wars, or if he was a fan of Star Trek, yeah, Star Trek, and he was like, Yeah, I don't like either. But Dude, he brought you, up good huh? real quick when he said that internally, I had like a face, but externally, I was like, hmm. But like internally, I was just like, Neither, like, you never hear that usually. No, I mean, I, you, you get it every once in a while, you know, and then they usually like. Well, I like small print comics and independent runs. And I was like, oh, okay, so. But he watches Mandalorian. Right, which is fine. No, but he did bring up a good point. He's like, J.J. Abrams ruined two franchises. So, like, yeah. you know, I mean, I think even for non-fans, that's like a common, like, outsider look of, of how that happened. With that being said, I don't even know why we're talking about that besides check out the comic well, book. But on a good not, show. Not only that, but how easy... I can think of like three or four different ways of we as we have been sitting here, you know, discussing and stuff of Yaddle. It would be there's three or four easy different ways to tie Yaddle into the Mando. And you could completely drop her in multiple places, multiple different ways. Yeah, because she's, she's young enough to still be around, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because like if you if she died for 74 uh, and that was probably what 14 BBY because we're, we're doing before battle yet. And we're, yeah. So about 14 BBY. So you had 14 years onto that. So we're in like uh, yeah, cause easily because she's got like, well, if she lives as long as Yoda, she's got hundreds of years left. She's got like 300 years, 300 plus years left. But if she doesn't, she's still I mean, who knows how long they can they could last is she going to show up in the mandalorian i don't know who knows man i'm not saying she's going to show up there i'm just saying like she might show up there she might show some like there's so many he's right solo's right like that actually is something like could more happen than you know star killer showing up in the middle of and and all of a sudden he's training people or doing something else or they could use it for some you know they could use her for something else. It's just interesting. And we should probably do a show on like the Jedi's that are still around. And that was one that's still maybe like, she's a 50, 50, but Opa for sure is like, like you don't put in a book that the dude slithered away <laughs> and got away. And then you don't like a lot of those characters in that soul run with Darth Vader. A lot of those characters that they were mentioning escaped order 66. Like they didn't pull the dream sequence, right? Like they didn't pull the dark side dream sequence here. They mm -hmm. actually showed him hunt them down and kill them. So, like, they never showed that happen. And is it because, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying that they're going to have, I mean, look, I do I really want this to show back up? <laughs> but, I mean, with that said, I Master know. and Apprentice, Seattle and Opa could be, Opo could be on a planet hiding and I'm trying to think a, a word for word what they said in Mandalorian. You have to get the child back to its own kind. So yeah. did, did they mean race or did they mean 
style of people, meaning Jedi. Hmm. Oh, so you're saying that Yettel might be hanging out on a planet of, of uh, green people with pointy ears? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, could do it. And, and even if... Well, they could do it. Exactly. It's just Yaddle and, and Opo hanging out on a planet. That would still be... The child would still be of the own the, that race. So... They could do a Zeb. You there's know? a lot of ways they could tie that into that really, really cool. easily. For those that don't know, Zeb thought that he was the last of his species. And in Rebels, then all of a sudden, like, three of his species show up and they end up tr transporting him to a different planet. And does Zeb, if I recall, he ends up going to that planet at the end of Rebels? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they could pull a Zeb and it could, you could be right. Even if it's not there, there could be reference to that. And if they reference that, then you know it's either going to show up in a comic down the road or sure. it's going to show up in a book or something like that. Like, it's just weird that she showed up. Like, it's not so weird she showed up in the Darth Vader thing. Like, that's fine. But then, like, to put her... Because Master and Apprentice was had nothing to do... I mean, it had to do with, like, uh, Dooku and, like... Uh, Dooku and... Uh, what's his name? Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan. It didn't have much... or Well, a couple other people in there. But it didn't have anything to do with her. Like, there was no reason to even mention her in that book. So it was very interesting to mention her in that book. It was very interesting, too, that, like, Pablo, for some reason, has some... Fat, Fetish is not a bad word as long as it's not like... I'm not saying he has a perversion. Let me make this clear. I'm not saying that he has a perversion for the... Uh, what did you call her earlier? Mrs. Smurf or whatever? The Smurfette. Smurfette. The Smurf Yoda version of Smurfette. Like, I'm not saying he has a perversion. I'm just saying that he has like one of these... like All of a sudden, the story group doesn't have a problem using her in other storylines. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, look, don't go out and start spending... Twenty dollars, even on like. <laughs> I found I found yeah, that no. appearance for two dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 a fair price. Yeah, that's a good book to have, anyways. That's a good run to have. I think the rest of the run's probably like a dollar piece, but it, maybe her cover or whatever. But it's cool. Read. You should be reading that portion, anyways, because it deals with. But I'm a big fan of Asherad Hat because I I like the story of. Uh, you know, Darth Crate, and I like how he was the perfect like transition, especially considering he had Obi Wan connections. So, like, I like that, anyways. Like, so I and I and I love the Dark Woman. I think she's a great yeah, character. Me too. I, I think they underutilize and underplay her as a character as well. And, and that I, that whole storyline right there ties in. And mm -hmm. I've said a great many times how they could tie Mando into some of that as well. If well, they I wrote a little, little yeah. bit. They'd have to rewrote a little the, bit. But. If they don't use her as a character, I think they could use somebody similar toward mm -hmm. her. So it's kind of good to have her. And to be honest with you, like bad Star Wars covers are like that's a whole nother genre of amazingness. And like, come on, man, look at <laughs> look at that, <laughs> look at that. I mean, that's just that's just great. That's almost like that's almost like a guy who can't draw feet. Like it's that good. Like yeah, yeah. that's how fun it is dude that's so like, shrek man that's star wars shrek right there dang they gotta they gotta pay uh dark horse some money for uh stealing the idea because that was absolutely yeah. well no that was probably what do you think 99 when did shrek come out i don't know when shrek came out but that was 99 so i who was first so shrek was way later because that was my first date with my ex-wife so that would have been 2002 2001 all right, so here's a true first appearance, first Shrek on a cover. There you go. All right. <laughs> but look, if they did it with Alderaan, Alderaan or whatever, right, and they did it with Seb's people, they can do it with Yoda's people. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely do it, even if you don't, because I think it would be too hard to, like, go to some planet where they're eating gross stuff all the time in some swamp world or whatever, or even like that. Like, how far can that go, right? Like, you're going to show the planet, and then you're going to have to explain – you're gonna have to explain. Well, okay, that, why there's that, not a lot of them. That begs a big, giant question. Do you think that if this progressed and, and we saw this come to fruition, do we find out the race or their home planet, the name of their race or their home planet? Because none of that has ever been said. And by they, I mean Yoda, Yaddle, the child. Well, I thought you. Lucas always wanted to keep it. Yeah. I don't think they're going to ever reveal where the planet is. And yeah. I don't, I, you know, I really, 
I don't know what they're going to do okay. do with the child, but you know, um, with what we've seen so far, because the last episode was, um, which was the last, the last episode was the one where Cara Dune and uh, Apollo, the one that Carl Weathers directed. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that they're using it as <clears throat> to try to take his blood and give it to something. We don't know what at this point, you know, probably by now we, by the time this video comes out, you guys are going to know. So, yeah. uh, but I would assume that we are also don't know if it itself has, is a clone or it itself has been manufactured some way. Um, if that's the case, then yeah, they will never, they probably won't reference the race or because they could have already referenced the race at this point in that episode, instead of calling it like whatever they called it, they could have called it. Do we ever heard it was? Yeah. Yeah. Cause that would have been a great, that the would asset. have been, yeah. They called the asset. It would have been cooler if they mentioned the race, but that's just a little fandom anyways. So like, yeah, maybe they'll mention it eventually, but it does have, you know, I mean, I know there's two of them and there's other, there's usually, they have them in backgrounds. All these, all the other characters are kind of in back. Like you've seen almost the whole Jedi council and other, not the actual characters, but you've seen that species someplace else throughout the universe. And these are pretty much the only two. I think I, there's one more, I think either way um, that you kind of see. So, it could be a Zeb type situation. Really, could be a Zeb type situation. Then again, actually, you know what? Uh, scratch that. I don't know how many of uh, bird, birds, <laughs> birds, snakes you've seen either. Hopefully, if they bring this character back, it's like a molting thing. Like it molts both its chickenness and its uh, and its uh, snakeness. So then we kind of get a new. It's like a butterfly effect. Maybe this was. Maybe this character slithered away to get in a cocoon, and then like Yoda Yettle helps like is like guarding the cocoon and then it comes out as a beautiful butterfly, uh, a Jedi butterfly. Like, a, could you imagine the merchandising <laughs> of the Jedi butterfly? Like legs, whatever, but like almost like a pixie, like just comes well, out. You know, those like little water things you put in water. So like, here's this first thing you put in water and it like, yeah, there you go. I like the sound effect too. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what you need. All of a sudden they roll up to, the you know the top of the mountain and Yettle's there and guarding and then you hear the give us that sound effect again please yeah, yeah like that and then then you get the uh, and then the uh, the butterfly Jedi uh, helps train them and stuff like none of this is happening guys none zero zero percent of this is happening and if it does um, I just looked on I am and they said it's happening so it's happening. <laughs> Credited. <laughs> stop putting stuff on IMBD. Please do stop doing that. That's not funny anymore. It was funny when we started it. Don't do it anymore. We're gonna get in trouble. They're gonna come for us one of these days. Um <laughs> did you really do that? Please tell me you didn't do that. Okay. Uh that's good. So listen, great stuff either way. Good character. It's a 50-50 character. You, two bucks is what you bought this book for recently or saw it for. I think I've been buying them less than that but now everything's going up in price because oh. it is what it is go out there get that get that series get back and read it if not um i don't think they made that into a tpb so go out and get that you know what what's it gonna cost you for the the heiress one it's good oh, I, I still wouldn't do it on ebay i don't think it's worth like plus oh no no this is definitely a hunting thing like yeah, you remember I, when especially me when i talk about it i don't buy books from the internet I, i'm too whatever i like the hunt of it so go out there hunt these down they should be still there i don't remember i'm trying to think about it and i don't remember it's probably been three or four months since i found any of these in a bin but you never know i just found it at the 50 50 off sale that's why it was four i got it for two. Oh, nice good cool which the whole run or did you just get one of the just, they only had just that one i was like this is oh, weird perfect. this is just sitting by itself yeah I, that to be honest with you, because she's in a lot of the other ones between it. Is it was it thirteen and sixteen, or is it twelve and thirteen and sixteen? I have never come across sixteen. Oh, I've I'll send you a copy. The other ones, though, and I'm like, that's weird. I'm I like, buy it all the time because I really buy the cover because it's so ugly. Like I have a problem with buying ugly covers. Um, and she just looks. So, she, you're right. She looks very smurf. Like it is so bad. Let's bring that up one more time for the people to watch. Let's just. Could we get a description? Solo Wookie, run us through the walk description of this cover right here. <laughs> well, we have Shrag diving in onto a giant orange attacking alien lizard worm. 
and we've got Cal Mundy halfway buried in a snowbank kind of thing, and he is getting ready to staver strike on top of the lizard worm of orangeness that is diving on top of oh, what is her name? I can't remember. Who is falling in the snowbank on the bottom of the page. But the absolute best highlight of this cover is Yaddle Shrek diving down out of the background onto striking the worm lizard alien. Mm-hmm. That and uh, what's his name's head looks like it's um <clears throat> about to explode. I mean, yeah. it's, they it, never draw. It they do such draw. a bad draw, job drawing him in the dark horse. Cal, series. Cal Mundy D is definitely not looking at ease in this picture. What was they, that movie? Air, was it Airheads? But they had like, like the cone, no coneheads no, or cone coneheads. Cone yes, cone yeah. Heads. But this yeah. is a little bit more. Uh, and bumpy uh, and yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> we're not gonna say we're not gonna say more what that what that head looks like. Um, but yeah, so watch. You know, like you could stop driving the car, pull over if you don't know what the cover is. It, it's terribly done. It's it's fantastic. So it's uh, a classic. It is something. It is something. But that's it. We just wanted to cover Yeddo once again. We do not think she is going to. Uh, Tie, tie in, but you know who knows, man. They she's might tie coming, in. folks. Coming don't big. She, don't say she's coming. <laughs> People are gonna think she's actually coming. Yeah, they're gonna somebody's gonna shoot a video saying like how she could have made frog whatever, and then like eggs, and <laughs> and it's like hidden because there was eggs. <laughs> In the little thing while Jen was counting all the eggs that people were eating, <laughs> and one of them turned out to be technically not even of that species. And the little thing that he was petting is one day going to turn out to be a yaddle. Because what was the rule? What was I had heard? Some, was it you? Somebody had crafted a theory one time about this. Okay, we'll just throw out that there can only be two Yodelay Hoo Hoo special. So, go ahead, tell your joke first, so then this the crowd. <laughs> No, I can't. No, I because we have so little knowledge on the species, their planet, their et cetera, et cetera. That um, so, what if the rule of two kind of lays over to their species hmm. through the metachlorin count? So every time one dies, another one through metachlorin count just naturally reproduces on their planet. Nobody knows about the planet. Nobody knows where the planet is. It's obviously in a galaxy far, far away. So once Yoda dies, this dude pops up, and now we have Yaddle hanging out on a planet, or Yoda, you know, is dead. So this one comes up. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if what if it's like that Will Smith movie where he, him, and Sharice Theron was it Sharice Theron? Oh, that hero, uh, Hancock. Oh yeah, it's Hancock. Yeah, yeah, it's Hancock. Where like they're like combined, but then if they get too close, they start to lose their powers. But there's always two of them. Also, like uh, Old Guard. Did you watch Old Guard before you came up with this theory? By the way, no, I, I, I did. Guard. I just, I, it just kind of was. I was, I don't know, perusing the webs there or listening to podcasts, and it just kind of dawned on me. Wow, what if that'd be a really crazy, weird way to spin it and do it but it's something they could totally do is that there's always two of them in the universe to try and balance the um the level of force in the universe interesting so, so if you want to go the out there and you would roll over so instead of getting the yellow books what you should do is go out and get old guard uh because that would explain how this works real quick it's old guard the speaker was it sharice Theron? wasn't she in that too yeah Oh wow, we're just all over Sharice. Am I saying her? I'm probably saying her name wrong too. Who cares? Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, great battle axe. On that note, uh, don't guys, just a little, just real quickly, uh, uh, just a PSA. Uh, don't let this happen to you. All right. Make sure <laughs> run with scissors. Just, you know the holidays are around the corner. Don't run with knives that point towards your throat. Uh, once again, we'd love to let. We love. We love it. We'd love to uh, support our sponsors. They did look. <clears throat> I don't know when this is going out. Hopefully, you didn't miss their sale because they are having a sale uh, mm -hmm. over there at Bird City Comics. 
Uh, if so, uh, uh, use the code uh, D A R K S H D E. Might get you a little bows there. They have great stuff over there. They're always rotating in new exclusives, which is brilliant. They have new inventory all the time. They do a great job. They are not only friends of the show, but they're friends of our friends of the show. Obviously, Jen has a special connection over there. Um, so go check them out. Always come up with new stuff and watch Comic Book Women. Hit the little bell, like, subscribe. Solo, please take us out of this nonsense today. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us, guys. This was kind of a fun one, as you're probably not going to hear this topic or the dives that we hit today very often. <laughs> so, go over, force push that like and subscribe, and then go check out Four Color Creations, because they're one of the greatest guys on the internet, and the stuff they do is amazing. And then, go over and check out Comic Book Barricade. Stop your dreaded spine ticks, folks. These things are going to help you keep your books vertical and in tight without falling down and getting that bend and dreaded spine tick. And then go over and saber strike that bell so that you can hear the greatest voices and faces this side of the galaxy. And may the Force be with you. Always. Always. <laughs>